Okay, so we're going to look at importing media into Basehead. Uh, this is pretty straightforward. Uh, there's just a couple of things to be aware of, so we'll take a look at all of the options here. So first of all, Basehead stores its media imports in database files. Now, we can manage a single database at a time, but we can actually select from multiple databases to manage. Down in the bottom left-hand corner here, we have the database selection option. So this will show any existing databases that we've been managing using Basehead. And next to it, we have a uh, folder selector to select the database location where we're reading our databases from. Now, multiple databases might be needed if we're using different collections of files that we don't need to be managing all in a single database, or maybe we're using a backup. In terms of backups, it's always a good idea to keep backups of your database. Now, Basehead actually makes automatic backups. So if we go into the options menu here, you'll see that under the advanced tab here, we've got keep X number of backups. At the moment, we're keeping five copies of our database and this will be done on a weekly basis every week basehead will make another backup uh, these backups are actually stored in the preferences folder under the db backups location so within each database we have what's called import libraries so import libraries are locations on our hard drive or external drives or just locations where we're reading files from think of it as a folder location and each import library is a separate library that we can individually browse and manage. Uh, multiple import libraries can exist in a database and we can search and manage all of these as a single database, but this keeps it segregated uh, for management purposes. Now, next to each import library, we have a refresh button. So this refresh button will scan through our files, remove any missing files, add new files and update any uh, changed locations to files. For this reason, if we're needing to do a lot of management to our libraries, if we're adding a lot of files over time, it may make sense to try and keep these libraries uh, to a, a, a reasonable file level. So maybe not going above 20 to 40,000 files. Uh, otherwise the scans will take uh, considerable time every time we need to update for new files. Now we can add as many imports as we like, and each of these imports can be renamed quite easily just by right clicking and renaming. We can even show hide these and uh, display just the results of each individual library. If we wanna localize a search through a particular library, we can select just that library, or we can actually hold down control or command on Mac OS and uh, select multiple libraries to scan through. But let's have a look at uh, importing our media into Basehead. So everything to do with importing or managing media files and databases is up in our database menu here. So on Mac, you'll find a database menu in your menu bar. Uh, and in here, we've got a number of database management options, which are self-explanatory. We can hover over them and get a tooltip to uh, get a little bit more information. Uh, we can create, rename, delete databases, things like that. Uh, one of the things to point out would be the option down here, rebuild indexes. So if you've got large databases that maybe start running a bit slow over time, especially when you start making a lot of edits and changes and things like that, the rebuild indexes option can be used to try and improve the performance of a large database. Uh, what we've got up here though is the import files option. Now the import files option is uh, accessed by uh, either clicking this or pressing control or command on Mac and I. And this opens the file import window. Now we can also open this import to database option by locating the folder that we wanna add and quite simply just dragging the folder into Basehead. When we drag the folder into Basehead, it auto already has the selected folder set for us. All we have to do is label the import and then set whatever options that we need to. So looking at the options, we've got some pretty straightforward options at the top here for uh, formatting the data as it's imported. Uh, this is mainly for uh, supporting long paths for windows or removing some duplicate words, things like that. Uh, then we have another windows only option down here, which is to use either drive letters or drive IDs for the source of the files. 
So this becomes important for removable drives. So removable drives can have the issue where the drive letter can change, especially if we're using multiple drives or going between computers. Uh, if we choose to use the hard drive ID option, what this will do is this will actually use the ID of the actual drive itself rather than the drive letter as the source. And then it will automatically resolve that if the drive letter changes, even if Basehead is running and the drive letter changes, it will automatically resolve that for us and we don't have to make any changes. So for external media or media on a location that is destined to change the drive letter, then what we wanna do is just make sure we use the hard drive ID option when we import that media. Now for the more advanced users that uh, need to import specific information into Basehead, you might have a number of data chunks in your files and there is specific information that you want. We can select the actual information that we want to import by selecting the options here. So if you're not sure, just leave this alone. Basehead will import whatever is in the files. But if you find that some data chunks are not being imported where you would prefer them to be imported, they're being overwritten by a different data chunk, you can try and deselect the ones that you don't want to be imported. And then the other option down here is if we're using groups, so groups are used to apply a group tag across multiple libraries. This allows us to easily create categories and groups that can apply to files across different libraries in our database. Then we can assign this particular import to a group on import. Uh, we can always add the groups later. Uh, there's just the option to do it when you're importing. So I'm just going to create a brand new, this uh, library that I've just dragged in, I'm just going to call this new. And now I'm going to just import. So all of my files have been imported and Basehead will read the metadata automatically on import. So all of my files have metadata stored within the file and this has now populated the entire database. Okay, so next I'm going to just import a library from an external drive. So this only applies to Windows users. Mac users don't need to worry about this. They won't even see the options here. Uh, but for Windows users, we want to be selecting to use the hard drive ID for external drives. And I'm just gonna call this USB drive. And I'm going to select my USB drive library files here, which is on my K drive. And so we have the uh, files imported. Now, if I hover over the USB drive, we'll see that uh, it is picking up the, uh, the letter of the drive. This is because Basehead will automatically resolve the drive letter as soon as, uh, as, soon as we start it up. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna look at um, changing the drive letter. So we've got our USB drive here, which was at uh, drive K. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually change the drive letter. So this is gonna simulate plugging this drive in and having a new drive letter assigned. And I'm gonna change this back to F. And so now our drive has, uh, has essentially been reconnected to the computer, has a new drive letter assigned, and we're gonna see how that affects the, the files. So because I've got the current library already selected, it's showing all my media is offline. It's still looking for it at the K drive location. But if I just simply select a different library and then go back to my USB drive library, we'll see that instantly Basehead has found the drive in the background and has automatically now resolved it at drive F. So you can actually see here that the drive letter itself has even changed.